Deshaun Foster is going to have UCLA's best recruiting class in nearly a decade. And that's only with half an offseason. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of Locked On UCLA. I'm your host, Zach Anderson Yoxheim. We're back and we're here to stay. Sorry I've been out of the blue. Lots of things have been happening. Good, bad, and everything indifferent. Today, the focus, UCLA football and the recruiting cycle that continues to climb to near the top of national rankings slowly but surely with the hiring of Deshaun Foster, a new emphasis on local high school recruiting, the Bruins have turned themselves into a top 25 national recruiting class for the class of 25. Let me say that again. A top 25 recruiting class, according to rivals, they're on the edge when it comes to on three and 24-7 sports, and Deshaun Foster hasn't just raised the level, he's returned UCLA to national recruiting prominence like they were prior to the Chip Kelly era. UCLA currently sits either fringe top 25 or number 25 as they are in rivals, where the Bruins haven't been ranked that highly in the top 25 of a recruiting class by the time it was all said and done since 2018. Early Chip Kelly, end of Jim Mora era when you're mixing in those couple of recruits, that's what UCLA was dealing with when it came to these last six years of non-recruiting. Only transfer portal guys, basically, or low-level recruits that you need to develop, but that was almost every single Chip Kelly guy. And mind you, this is what Deshaun Foster is doing without a single five-star recruit. Now, there are guys who could rise up. Maybe that's Man Imelava, UCLA's potential quarterback of the future, SoCal kid, the brother of Tennessee quarterback Nico, who also got rave reviews when it came to recruiting cycle, and the Bruins are doing that, just stacking up positions of need. Deshaun Foster has made an emphasis on relationships, going out and hitting the local talent and bringing them to UCLA, and when he needs a spot filled, he will address it like he's done in the portal to as the best of his ability in this offseason for 24, and in 25, he is stacking the deck in UCLA's favor. Whether it's finding the quarterback of the future, and I know UCLA already has a few quarterbacks coming in. They still have Justin Martin for a couple more years, who is battling for a starting spot this year. Garbers pretty much has that solidified at the moment. And then you've got what UCLA is doing, replenishing the need at DB, where UCLA has already got a couple of defensive backs. They're crystal balled for another one in a couple of days. When UCLA needed some tight ends after injuries, after transfers, UCLA in the last couple of days in early June gets two, trans- gets two commits coming to UCLA. And then to top it off, what did UCLA lose a lot of talent this year? On the D-line. So what is UCLA going to do? They have been hitting the defensive line with prowess. And with the big move, what do you need to do when you're going to the Big Ten? You must be physical up front. And UCLA's hit the offensive line. Let's go over this recruiting class that continues to bulk up as June wears on. I was reading Tracy McDaniel. He's the rivals UCLA reporter. Talking about, he wrote this note. This is the largest UCLA commitment class for close to a month in the month of June since 2016. That was the Jim Moore time when UCLA would go get recruits and go build and build a recruiting class. So UCLA went from before this recent stretch to about six, now pushing that number of commits in this class to 10. Remarkable. I can't remember when UCLA was this early in the recruiting cycle, which I'm not sure if it's super early, but compared to Chip Kelly, it is. Just pushing themselves towards having a roster that's set for the next season and ready to compete for years to come. So uh, Tracy McDowell, this is what his tweet said. Nine commits. This was prior to the latest UCLA commit. So this is the most they've had into the month of June since the 2016 recruiting class. UCLA is trending to their highest ranking in an individual recruiting class in nearly a decade. 2015 is, I think, where the potential for UCLA can grow if these guys keep getting stars added, if they develop in their senior years of high school. 
The Bruins could have their best recruiting class since Josh Rosen came to town, and UCLA had three five stars in that class. I'm not saying they have five stars here, but they've got a solid SoCal quarterback. They've got some talented running backs coming in. It all started with the Carson Cox commitment coming into UCLA. And now the Bruins are piling in the talent. So who is one of the latest crystal balls UCLA is going to get? It is Jaden Hudson, who is a four-star DB. So all these rankings doesn't even include this Hudson kid from Pittsburgh, California, 6'2 safety, who is crystal ball from the 24-7 sports site to say that UCLA is going to get this kid. So right now the Bruins are trending 25 in one side, trending top 25 in other recruiting rankings. And you go get a 20, a four-star DB, four-star safety, you get the secondary bulked up. Mind you, this is all with the new defensive coordinator. And in the Kaka Malloy, he can recruit. He could do that at Washington. The, this recruiting staff, I think when given the opportunity and the reins, they're let loose, they can go get guys. It's completely different philosophy. And now the Bruins, who they're fighting with Oregon like it is, a lot of these West Coast recruits, like Madden Imeleava, who was given a last-second scholarship offer from Oregon. And now the Bruins are coming in, having an opportunity to compete with Big Ten rivals, USC, Washington, and Oregon. And the Bruins now are ponying up, as we saw in basketball, NIL-wise, and are proving their worth to the SoCal recruits. We've got the academics. We've got the locale. We're in SoCal, obviously. It's a big brand name school. All right. There may not be had the Nike money like it does in Oregon, but UCLA has something to offer. And I keep reading, you can go through these different reports from the official visits. Everybody's checking it. We're going to UCLA. We got to visit UCLA. And the recruits that are committing, academics in the school, academics in the brands, which UCLA has always had, and increasingly so, been a tougher school to get into. People recognize. Those four letters, right? UCLA, UCLA, fight, fight, fight. And now it's coming into, hey, they're getting guys on the West Coast. They can go across the country and get a defensive lineman like Tyler Parto, Partlow, excuse me, as a defensive lineman to help fill in the need in a spot where they say, hey, that's a good kid across the country. We can develop him and bring him over the West Coast. And now UCLA's got something to hang with on the defensive line. Let's go over some names really quick of this ever-growing class. So the big name in recent weeks, and arguably of this class, is Madden Imelava. From Downey, comes in, 6'3 quarterback, committed at the end of May, prior to Memorial Day. Big time get for UCLA. Huge, 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 huge for UCLA, I think could be the quarterback of the future. Then you've got the likes of Carson Cox, who over this mid-May to early June stretch, start off the commitment frenzy for UCLA with the official visits. Everybody coming in, the Bruins got a three-star, potentially four-star by the time his senior season ends in a running back. And if you know this staff, three running backs coaches from Deshaun Foster, the head coach, Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator, and they have a running backs coach, I think they can tell what a running back talent is. Then you've got the likes of coming in, Garrison Blank, 6'7 offensive tackle from Rockland, California. You're telling me the Bruins are getting size on the offensive line now? Okay. Okay, that is what you need. If you're starting at 6'7", big boy from high school, that is what you need to stock up against some stout defenses you're going to face, like when they go play Iowa or other teams in the Big Ten, and you got to run the football late in the season in cold-weather games in early November, mid-November, when the season is on the line. Then you've got Dylan Sims coming in, one of the later ones, Tyler Partlow. You've got other guys all filtering in for this UCLA class that's growing and growing, six, seven commits now heading in this last month. The Bruins are making things happen. If I forgot names, it's because it's just coming in again and again and again. And then you've got Hudson, who's on the verge potentially of committing to UCLA between the Greg Biggins, the Brent. It's looking like the UCLA class is going to creep in to not just top 25 territory, top 20. I'm thinking the Bruins could slowly crack the top 15 with the relentless pace Deshaun Foster has been recruiting with. It's unbelievable. Now, can the X's and O's, can the game management, can everything translate to the fans in the seats? The NIL support that's needed to be there with recent NCAA rulings, 
all the money coming in. Is can UCLA compete in that? They're competing. They're competing right now, recruiting wise, and the wars are only going to change more and more. But right now, Deshaun Foster is up to the task for the first class that could arguably be pushing top twenty, top fifteen in nearly a decade when Josh Rosen came into town. And those are some studs on that roster. And they put up some points. We had some good moments. We wish they would have been better. But that is the class with the excitement that the Bruins had at the peak of the Jim Moore era. And this is only the beginning of the Deshaun Foster era. Trending up top 25 for close, first time in nearly six years. Highest rated class maybe in a decade. And they're not stopping. So look at that. Crystal balls, commitments, visits. Got to keep an eye on this. Summer camp, summer, fall camp, what, you know, it's coming soon. And I'm excited, and I hope you are, because Big Ten country better be on the look for the Bruins. It might not translate to success this year, although I think they might surprise people on the field and in the win column. Still, I think the Bruins are slowly building for a good future. All right? So don't be too worried. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. It's not like you're recruiting in football like Deshaun Foster. You need your passion. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 120 million plus parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed your part to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because eBay Motors says you're not burning, you're going to burn rubber, not cash. So with all the parts you want at the prices you would love, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home those wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items, eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. That's going to do it for us here on Locked On UCLA today. I'm Zach. I'm back. Sorry, I've been out of town, going everywhere, missing some big stories. Yes, we will talk softball. We will talk Bill Walton. We'll do a tribute episode. We'll talk basketball. We'll talk more football. There's so many things that are happening in this UCLA athletics landscape. We're back. We got one out, and we're going to touch those topics. Sorry I was gone. Busy, tough times, but now we're back. All right? But in the meantime, get your hands up, Bruins fans. Eight clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, U, C, L, A, U, C, L, A, fight, fight, fight. This has been Locked on UCLA. Zach signing off. Go Bruins.